Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight, where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now, Russia's nuclear power giant, Rosatom, which over the last few years has primarily been engaged in the construction of nuclear power plants abroad, is now focusing its attention back on the Russian market. Now, the company has announced plans to construct 11 new nuclear power plants in Russia. Yes, 11. Now, furthermore, this does not include the replacement of several existing nuclear power plants. So what's the rationale for the construction of the new nuclear power plants in Russia and how can they contribute to the global nuclear power innovation? Now, it's anticipated that approximately 11 new power plants will be constructed in Russia by 2042. Now, this proposal is set out in the general plan for the development of Russia's electric power generation facilities. Now, the construction of the new power plants are planned for the Rostov, Sverdlovsk, Chelyabinsk and Tomsk regions, as well as Primorsky, Krasnoyarsk and Karovorsk territories, plus the uh, Chukotka Autonomous region and Yakutia. Now, two plants are also going to be constructed in uh, Chukotka and the Krasnoyarsk, but they're probably going to be smaller floating ones. Now, in addition to the 11 new PPPs, the project includes the plans to replace the capacity of some of the existing power plants. Now, these are called uh, Nuclear Power Plant 1, the Kursk Power Plant 1 and the Smolensk 1. And there are two, two and two are scheduled for new commissioning, so they'll get new ones. I mean, the objective is to implement the order of the Russian president and achieve a nuclear energy share of electricity generation of 25% by 2045. Now, the new general scheme provides for the construction of 28 gigawatts of new nuclear power generation. And by implementing this ambitious task, we will be able to provide the country's regions with clean energy for decades to come and create the basis for a confident economic growth pattern, says Andrei Lechakev, who's the director, general director of Rosatom. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, to further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation, which can be done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the screen, uh, video screen. Everybody who donates gets a personal thank you from me, and I'm thanking you all now just for watching. Now, Rosado has previously been the subject of criticism for promoting its projects abroad, mainly in countries that include Turkey, China, Bangladesh, India, Egypt, Belarus, and Hungary. Now, some of these projects have been the subject of debate due to whether there are questionable economic viability, with examples being in Belarus and Turkey. Now, in Russia, there's been a notable our absence of nuclear projects in recent years. Subsequently, Ross Adams announced of its plans to construct these 11 new power plants appears to shift the focus towards the domestic market. Now, this will have a positive effect uh, on the, um, the company's image, says Igor Yushkov, who's an analyst at the National Energy Security Fund and the Russian Financial University. Conversely, the company is also facing criticism for the potential impact of its expansion in Russia. I mean, the construction of additional nuclear power plants could lead to increased lobbying for tariff hikes given the high costs associated with these projects. Well, high costs by Russian standards, but not by Western standards. This could re result in the creation of new capacity prominent tariff reliefs increases. So it's therefore to consider not just the construction of the nuclear power plants, but also the economic viability of the new project and other locations uh, optimal for where they're going to be built. I mean, that will ensure that the most cost effective option is selected, whether it's a nuclear power plant or a conventional thermal power plant using either coal or gas. Now, in terms of demand, it's anticipated that the growth is going to be around 1% to 2% a year. And this growth is going to be driven by Russia's industrial expansion and its rising living standards, which are driving up consumption. Plus, the increased prevalence of the use of electronic devices and the rising use of air conditioning, for example, during the summer months, uh, are contributing to an overall rise in electricity consumption. 
So additionally, the need for power plant refurbishment is necessary. I mean, some plants are coming towards the end of their 45 years of operation, so that needs to be taken into account. Plus, the south of Russia is experiencing a deficit in electricity power. That's due to the sustained growth in demand because of population movements. I mean, one of the fastest growing regions is the southern federal districts, and people are relocating to live in Stavropol, Krasnodar Krai, the Crimea, and the Rostov Oblast. That's where there's significant growth in pop population, plus during the summer season. Tourists have higher expectations and levels of comfort with air conditioning and availability of uh, other electric power, the amusements with things. I mean, in Crimea, the decision was made to forego the construction of a nuclear power plant due to the region's seismic risks. So they did develop an energy bridge from Kuban and built a nuclear power plant in Rostov. So they created the additional capacity that way. Now also on to Moscow. The growth of Moscow and the Moscow region also necessitates the establishment of uh, further capacities. Plus the Smolensk and Kursk regions are well suited for the location of power generation facilities. Now, the growth in electricity consumption is driven by an increase in industrial output, particularly in the Russian manufacturing sector, plus obviously the military industrial. Now, the growth of the military industrial complex has been a key driver of Russia's economy in recent years, and this growth is expected to continue even after the conflict in the Ukraine has come to an end. I mean, the military industrial complex is going to continue to operate to replenish its reserves and plus the market for export is now enormous. Russia's now got the opportunity to modernise its army, provide weapons that have been tried and tested in modern combat conditions and they are now ready for export. I mean, the demand for Russian weapons has a significant impact on the metals and other industries that's also require substantial energy resources. So, new nuclear power plants will be constructed in the industrial regions of the country that consume a significant amount of energy, such as the Chelyabinsk region. Now, uh, the population of Yakutia and Chukotka, which are relatively small populations, but they're huge areas and their energy consumption is quite low. These are actually in the far north of Siberia. Now, they do have some large industrial facilities and the low power nuclear power plants are designed to serve these facilities. Now, the BAME floating nuclear power plant, which you can see a picture of on the screen now, is constructed to work at the Bemsky Gok, which is a gold and copper mining processing plant in Chukotka. It's one of the largest in the world, actually. Um, and these reactors will be constructed and is installed in the new nuclear power plants. Well, the first project to install a VVERTOI reactor at the Kursk uh, nuclear power plant will replace the third generation VVER-1200 reactors. Now, the VVERTOI is already a third generation traditional fourth generation reactor, but still in its experimental phase. I mean, the VVERTOI has not as greater capacity, but it's more technologically advanced. It's safer and more efficient uh, in terms uh, of its performances uh, and pull off. Now, in remote regions where consumption is uh, more powerful, the, these smaller reactors like the VVERS will be used. I mean, the first tests of these reactors have been conducted conducted and they are working out fine. Now the third type of reactor is the BN1200. Now this is a fast neutron reactor. The reactor utilizes the spent nuclear fuel as actual fuel, namely plutonium obtained from conventional reactors. Now you mix this plutonium with uranium and it produces a mock fuel for the BN1200. That's according to Ann Pulgoff. Now, following the construction of the new VVERTOI and the VVERS at the Kursk and Kola station, Ros Rosatom will probably present them to the international market for sale. I mean, small reactors could be, example, offered to islands or small states, for example. But first, the company is going to show, showcase its reference nuclear power plants in Russia and show their full range of advantages and then. Only then will they send them out for export. As an example, the uh, VVER-1200 was tested at the Novo Voronezh MPP. 
Now, given uh, Rosatom's position as a global leader in the nuclear industry, it's logical to pursue the development of its carbon-free energy. I mean, it also has a distinct advantage that than the energy sector as during the Soviet era Russia uh, it developed an energy infrastructure through the use of its nuclear power plants plus hydroelectric power plants and there's quite a number of those they actually make up about 20 percent of Russia's uh, <coughs> power grid and they do not emit carbon dioxide so these type of energy plants have major advantages over the West's commitment to solar and wind is that they operate continuously and they allow for the regulation of output and the smoothing out of consumption uh, peaks. I mean nuclear power plants provide a reliable source of energy for the most intensive energy industries. Metallurgy. Germany which recently ceased its nuclear energy production in response to pressure from its so-called green climate activists is now buying energy from France because that's deficit in power generation. France which retains its position as a global leader in energy generation from nuclear which accounts for 70% of its total. Anyway so that's Russia's plans for a nuclear future and it's all looking quite bright. So thank you for watching please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video you can help me fund the channel and the website seobricksinsight.com by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the screen. Please like, uh, please use the comments. I do love to get your comments. I do love responding to them and I do love interacting with you. So thank you very much and I'll see you all again soon.